talent is also Jarrell Hato, the center back of Ajax, one of the best talents in his position in the world, for sure, born in 2006, super talented center back, really. Dutch player who is in the list of many clubs. In the last days, we saw rumors about Arsenal, and I'm told that Arsenal scouts have been in attendance multiple times to follow Ajax talents in general because they believe Ajax style is really serious. So let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. As you guys heard right there, Arsenal are heavily linked to an Ajax youngster. Yes, Gerald Hyatt. That's how you pronounce his name. Arsenal are plotting a move for the player. And today we're seeing more and more links about him. So let's get into it. What do you guys think about the 17-year-old left back joining Arsenal? We're going to continue with David uh, with uh, Fabrizio Romano's update on that. Plus, we're also going to talk about some other stories. Just to, just to name a few, we're also linked to a Turkish player today. We're also going to get into the PGMOL and, the, and them trying to paint Arsenal with this brush again as complainers and the the Daily Mail running an absolute blas uh, I can't say blasphemous but disgusting story the Arsenal agenda continues and we're going to expose all of that today let's get this show started as always make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and if you guys enjoy this content let me know because I've been doing this for four days now and I'm not getting your feedback so let me know in the comments what you guys think hit the like button hit the subscribe button and if you haven't already checked it out we're four days in and I've been doing it every single day so make sure you guys continue to check out these Arsenal transfer news updates let's get the show started Let's continue with what Fabrizio Romano had to say before we go into the story itself. Similar to what they want to produce in terms also of how the defensive players create uh, and they start the action from, uh, from there. But also important to say that Jarrell Hato, yes, is being watched by Arsenal, but is also being followed and tracked by many important clubs in the world. But really, I could mention four or five top, top clubs monitoring this boy. So the race is absolutely open. The situation is absolutely open there. Nothing is easy for the January transfer window. So the expectation is for Ajax to fight to keep the player at least until the end of the season. They want Hato to stay. So I think it's going to be very difficult in January. Only a very important and crazy proposal could change the story. But also for Hato, the idea to stay at Ajax is probably the best one at this point of his career. So he's focused on Ajax. And let's get into the actual story. So just so you guys know, that's what Fabrizio Romano had to say about the player. And let's get into the actual stories about the player first things first. So we have Hato, uh, regarded as one of the uh, best prospects currently at Ajax, one of the most exciting prospects in Europe. He's he he's currently, if I'm not mistaken, he's currently he's currently uh, he's 17 years old, and he's Ajax's captain. Is that true? Is he the captain? I think he might be the captain. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's he is the first. Yeah, he's he's Ajax's captain, uh, and and he's and he's doing, bro. He became the youngest ever captain in the club's history. Yeah, he became the youngest ever captain in the club's history this season, and yeah, that is he's seventeen years old, guys. Seventeen years old. The the guy is crazy um let's let's get into this story before we go to the uh, before we go to the next one i obviously don't want to show game film game footage but yeah arsenal are plotting a move uh for for the ajax teenager how to the 17 year old operates as a center back and a left center back uh, sorry and a left back also every minute this season for ajax he has played he has played every single game for Ajax this season. Let me get, let me give you guys a little bit more information on on this guy. This season, he has played a total of how many games in the league? He's played sixteen games in the league. He's played eight games in the Europa League, and he's played one game in the cup. And per, predominant positions this season. Let's 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 find out. So this season, he's played as a right centre back. He's played as a left centre back, and he's also played as a left back. Throughout his career, let's find out his career makeup, how many games he's played in each position. In 
In center back, he's played 52 games. As left back, he's played 37 games. In center mid, he played one game in his career. So that is in his whole entire career. That's that's the breakup of where he has played. This is a 17-year-old center back, and he might cost a little bit just just to just to get just to get him over the line. But at this moment in time, we're getting a lot of reports over uh, over from over from uh, the certain articles let me show you guys so sam dean is the uh, from the telegraph is the main one to report this he said that arsenal are plotting a move for the teenager let me know do you guys think our priority should be a left back and a defender at this moment in time because a lot of people are saying with the situation with timber tomiyasu and of course zinchenko a, a defender might be important but at the same time he is 17 years old if he was to come into this arsenal team would he be starting week in week out genuine question i have not watched him enough to say yes or no definitively but from the highlights that i've seen of him he looks like he looks very composed on the ball he looks like a really good man defender who can win the ball with ease against uh, against brighton even when he played against brighton most recently you also see him pick up the ball in sticky situations and glide past defenders He's he's shown the uh, he's shown the ability on the ball to be as uh, to be able to ping long balls into into the forwards uh, for Ajax and he's also able to link up well in in small spaces in triangles in the attacking third and he has the physicality to push defenders off of him when need be. Just from short f- footage that I'm that I'm looking at right now, I can just tell you guys this guy is a quality player, but. The question is, would Arsenal be able to pull off the transfer and how much money would it cost? We don't know those figures yet. We don't know that information yet. But at this moment in time, there's a lot circulating. Uh, also, Arsenal will be wearing their white kits for uh, the upcoming FA Cup third round game to say no to no more red campaign uh, to fight knife crime in the UK. And let me just get back to the next link because we are linked to another player before we uh before we go we are linked to a turkish player yes a turkish player we are linked to a turkish player so let me show you guys the turkish player we're linked to this is the turkish player we are linked to uh this is arsenal have recently watched um how do you pronounce this name god knows let me see if the pronunciation from google's better ferdy kega on site on the Fenerbahce and Galatasaray game, the match scouts, uh, the the chief scout level, uh, presents the final report, uh, and basically Arsenal have been scouting him. It doesn't guarantee that we would we will sign him, but one second, just because just because we're scouting him doesn't mean we're going to sign him. But that is that is the report at this moment in time. Let me see what uh, Zed had said. So. Arsenal will knock on Fenerbahce's door for the 27-year-old versatile fullback this month. So this is a very reliable source, uh, uh, Asper. But let's see, let's see what happens from there. At this moment in time, I'm just gonna look. I'm just gonna look him up quickly just to see what we can find. He's 24 years old, Turkish international. He 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 plays. He plays for. He currently plays for Fenerbahce, of course, and. Let's just see how many games he's played and where he's played predominantly in his career. Has he played on both wings? It looks like he's might have he might have played on both wings in his career. Yeah, so he's played left back, right back, and he's also played right wing. Interesting. Is he naturally right footed? No, he's naturally. Let's see what's his profile. He's naturally right footed. Yes, and he can play on both wings defensively. He's played 50, he's, wow, he's played 56 games as an attacking midfielder. He's played 44 games as a right winger. He's played 43 games as a left back, 33 games as a right back, 33 games as a left winger, 19 games as a right midfielder, 19 games as a left midfielder. 10 games as a central midfielder, 15 games as a central midfielder. He's also played as a set defensive midfielder and a striker. What the hell? This guy, you guys won't believe it. This guy's played everywhere. This guy has played absolutely everywhere. This is unheard of. I've not seen this much versatility in a long time. 
This is ridiculous versatility. You got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. Where would he play predominantly for Arsenal? Probably in the fullback positions. But this is somebody who can cover one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven positions where he's played quite prominently throughout his career. That just goes to show you how versatile he is. And he's even played in central mid. So you could technically say he's played in eight positions quite prominently throughout his career. More than 20 games in five different positions. More than 15 games in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight positions. That is ridiculous versatility. I don't know if that's going to stick if he joins Arsenal, but let's wait and see. Personally, for me, we're, it looks like we're seriously looking to sign a fullback this uh, this January transfer window. Let's see how that progresses, because at this moment in time, that's where we're hearing majority of the information is headed in the fullback positions. But there is also another story, and this story is absolutely disgusting. It is disgusting, ladies and gentlemen, and I am disgusted. And what do I expect? This is what I expect from the media, to use Arsenal agendas to make clicks and to get them clickbait articles. Arsenal complained to the PGMOL over the treatment of Bukayo Saka by opponents, and the star uh, is the third most fouled player in the Premier League. In the article, if you actually read it, you can clearly see that they, br they brought up as a it was brought up as a wider conversation this season with the league referring to uh, the body. And, of course, they've had dialogue, which happened to be between all the clubs and the governing body, the PGMOL. So Arsenal believed to have said that the referee should be using yellow cards to uh, offenders after the strong fouls on the 22-year-old rather than waiting until the second infringement. That is accurate. That that the club probably did say that. And the club probably did speak about Bakao Saka and continuously getting fouled because he does get continuously fouled. But the article had malicious intent. The article was not to give people news. This was old information that they were sitting on based on the fact that they stated that this was a previous, uh, this was brought up wider conversation earlier in the season. So why bring it up now? Why not bring it up when, when, when you could have brought it up originally? And also, this is just proves the Arsenal agenda, the Mikel Arteta agenda, the Bukayo Saka agenda, and the media's agenda to just gain clicks. I think this is absolutely disgusting, disgraceful, and the headline is basically lying to imply that Arsenal are openly complaining once and over and over and over again when we're not. We're literally having a civil conversation with the PGMOL when they came to us to have our, our, our annual conversation. It wasn't like we went out of our way to speak about Bukayo Saka. No, they were going to every single club, knocking on their door, saying, hey, how's you doing? Any problems or any conversations that we need to discuss about your own issues at your club? And we brought that up. And luckily, the mail got this story and they ran with it at a convenient time when we just lost back-to-back -back games in the Premier League for the first time in in this season so hey it is what it is people are going to run disgusting stories but i just wanted to run that past you guys and as for the rest of the stuff going on today there's not much else really going on just speaking about the 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 scouts at, and the two fullbacks that we've been linked to not really anything else of major news floating around today i have already covered it on my previous videos where we spoke about vlahovic where we spoke about zubamendi where we even spoke about tamiyasu's new contract we spoke about parte you can check out those videos they are yeah they are uh down below or they should be playing here but hey I'm out of here, people. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys haven't already checked it out, yesterday we had an explosive video between Northside, uh, Dawood, Skunner Souls, and, of course, Femi. And it was a great stream. Over over 500 of you guys the whole entire way. It was really good, entertaining uh, content. And, of course, we also got – it was a good discussion. So I would check it out if I were you. But, yeah, that's it for today. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.